And hello everyone, Blade here. Welcome to my let's play of Team Hospital. And first off, let's lower the speed. And yes, this is Team Hospital as you can see. So let's get this stuff on the road. The first thing I always do is hire doctors because you have other hospitals competing with you. So right now we want to have the better bunch of the litter and those are all crappy yep this one's good let's see that one's nice and yeah that's all right let's do two handyman and let's hire a receptionist and let's put down the receptionist desk here let's speed things up a bit there we go that's already number one. Alright, let's do our diagnos uh, diagnosis rooms, because with the diagnosis rooms you can actually find out what is wrong with your patients. So let's first do the GP's office, and the GP's office, GP stands for General Practitioner actually. Let's get that. And this is basically the first stop on the way to um, healing themselves, so per se. Let's see, there we put the bin. And with this, they basically they go here and then they are being pushed through to a um, to another diagnostic uh, room. But let's put a pharmacy here because that just fits around the corners very nicely and tightly. Now the pharmacy basically just dispenses cures for the sickly. So let's put some radiators in here. Radiators are very important so your uh, staff doesn't freeze over. Now you may have noticed that there's like you have the psychiatric uh, the psychiatric wing here in the diagnostic room, but as you can see here it also cures patients. So it's also here. And same goes for the ward for by diagnosis and treatment. Patients are sent in for observation and also recover from operations in a ward with a nurse. So that is also very handy to have. So here we have our lovely little psychiatric wing. And let's buy a bookcase, a skeleton, and two radiators and a bin. Just to avoid uh, littering too much. Let's put one over there and one over here. And let's first do the comfy chair here. Place the skeleton here and a bookcase over there. And there we go, that's the bin. And now, last but not least, let's build a ward. Now, wards are usually pretty big, as you can see. And the reason for that is they house hospital beds. And these hospital beds take up a lot of room, so you might want to keep that in mind. And what you can see here, you can actually buy more accessories for in the room itself. Bins, radiators, plants, fire extinguishers. I personally don't use the plants that much because I think it is actually a distraction for your handyman. There we go. Let's just place three beds in here. Put the desk in there. Let's see. Radiator here. A radiator there. A radiator there so the patients don't get cold. Alright now, oh yeah, we have the general diagnosis room. Let's see, wow, this is actually way too big, so I'm actually gonna see if I can close this off. Because I don't want my doctors w walking around here and just do nothing, because that's just, that's just basically pointless in my opinion. So let's see, let's put that thing over there, that thing over there, so they can have a moment to their self and appreciate their nice bodies. I know that did come out quite right, but ah here, patients who require further diagnosis are sent to the, are sent to be checked here. So basically they uh they shove thermometers up the butt or uh, get a stethoscope against their uh chest or whatever. And yeah, let's do the inflation thingy here. Actually, let's make it a little bit bigger because the machine is pretty big. And as you notice, I, I tend to keep the doors into a general path so your patients don't have to walk around to uh, 
actually find the stuff that they're looking for so all in good thought of oops helping yourself so that's the inflation room now I'm gonna build another GP's office and the reason before uh, because of that is when they come in here by the way let's open this one up and let's place these guys in the correct thingies but they usually the patients come in here and then from there on are sent to diagnosis and shit but once the diagnosis is full the diagnosis bar they'll head back to the GP's office and report just to get a cure so what I usually do is that they uh, that they go to the diagnostic rooms and then I think I'm gonna place it here so they don't have to walk back but that they just can go over here and then from there go there or there I hope you guys understood what I was trying to uh, what I was trying to explain here but yeah okay yeah uh, let's just do a slightly bigger GP's office yay for the guy who gets to work there and also fire extinguishers basically add up to this to the safety in the uh, hospital itself VIPs really would love to see that so also clean hospitals help a lot also very 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 important all right now we only have the staff room and the toilets well I I guess you guys already know what the toilets are for so yeah let's let's do it like that and get the door over there and basically like because we did that we basically blocked off this whole wing of the hospital which is very good uh, let's do two sinks get some more toilets three radiators and of course a bin just to uh, when they are done answering nature's call let's put some shitters in here it's a shitter yeah that's all right and a bin and last but not least your staff room because your staff gets tired after a while after working in those dank shitty ass hospital walls and since we don't have any new uh, whatchamacallits, uh, treatment rooms, we're just gonna do it here so let's do two pool tables, a couple of TVs, some sofas so they can relax and for radiators alright let's put the pool table there sofa right next to it and a TV in front of it always nice to watch some TV to watch the telly and let's just there we go all right let's see TV here TV here and put a radiator there we put a radiator here and we got a little messagey thingy and it turns out they have a new condition it's called the uncommon cold with small particles of snot in the air and they get a runny nose, sneezing and a dis and discolored lungs. A big swig of uncommon cough medicine made from special ingredients in the pharmacy will cure this. And hooray, we just cured our first patient. And let's uh, place a doctor in there. And here we see the first guy going into the general diagnosis. And as you can see his diagnostic process bar is almost full. There we go, he just uh, breathed a couple of times. Let's see how much money we can scam off from him. Also with these bars you can here you can basically set your research once we got that. Now the policy, that's a actually a very interesting one, the hospital policy or the diagnostic uh, termination. Once they reach 100% they'll stop the procedure but what you can do is crank it up so that they'll uh, uh, diagnose further even though they already know what's wrong with them and so get more money from them it's a cheap way of scamming out uh, them out but yeah it's nice and here we have TV personalities the cause is daytime television the symptoms are delusions of being able to present a cookery show and the cure is a well-trained psychiatrist must convince the patient to sell their TV and buy a radio 
So let's speed things up, shall we? Oh, and I just noticed something. I forgot to place down radar eaters in the hallways as well as drinks machines and benches. So that's bad. That is really, really, really bad. Your patients do not like that. So let's make sure that they're nice, warm and comfy. Let's see, here we can actually see the radiators. All right, this entire corridor is completely blank. So let's fill that up, shall we? There we go, that ought to do the trick. One, two, three, four, and let's check it again. That's better, it's not perfect, but it's better. All right, let's get some drinks machines. Just so our guys won't go thirsty. And I don't know what's exactly wrong with the sound just now, but I hope it goes over. There we go, we don't need that. And we have discovered a new condition called the heat piles. Standing around by water coolers, the patient feels like she's sitting on a bag of marbles. And yes. Hmm, this sounds a bit fucked up though. Hang on, I'm gonna try to cure this. I'll be right back. There we go, and it's fixed. And he has a 62% chance of that. Uh, yeah, that guy basically has invisibility. They don't know exactly sure what is wrong. And now they want to give us the three possibilities to uh, let him wait while we build more diagnosis rooms but we don't have more diagnosis rooms so that's useless you can take a chance of the possible cure but you can also risk the chance of him dying and because it's 62 percent it's really low so i'm not gonna chance that so let's buy benches so our peeps can sit and you guys just thought, wow, you just bought a lot, but yeah, just watch how much you actually need. Because you want at least a few benches near every door. Don't know why I'm putting benches near the toilets, but yeah, you, may, you, you never know, you know. And let's make a little... There we go. Uh, let's see, how is the heat going along? There's still a few gaps in there, so I think we can fix that with two radiators. Let's place one over here and place one over he here. So, yeah, he's, she's on her way to the pharmacy. Let's speed things up a bit. And he's going to the ward. And basically in the ward, oh, we got a VIP. Billy Seville, OBE, has expressed a wish to visit your hospital. So yeah, let's send them over. VIPs can also give you nice cash rewards, so... And this is basically what they do here. They keep them for observation, the patient sleeps, and the diagnosis bar is full. Now what you could do is send them for a cure now, instead of waiting for the diagnosis to be complete. It, it can be handy if the hospital is extremely full. So... But I wouldn't do that, actually. 74% no it's still too low in my opinion if it's above 80 then I am welcome to try but let's see did we have everything yes we did and he thinks it's cold is it cold well let's just crank up the heater a little bit more and we got a new condition it's called the squids eating pizza found under the cooker and the symptoms, ugh, surely you can guess. And the cure is a gluttonous mix of stringy pharmaceutical chemicals. Solidify the patient's innards. Okay. That's very, very nice. And there's another invisibility guy. And he has a 58% chance. Nope, we're not going to do that. And there we go. We just made another 417 bucks. And we got another condition. A bloaty head. Sniffing cheese and drinking unpurified rain water. The symptoms are very uncomfortable. Are very uncomfortable for the sufferer actually. 
And the cure is this, the swollen head is popped, then reinflated to the correct PSI using a clever machine. And you guys just missed it. Ah, dang it. Dang it. And our first... Ah, here is our VIP. Let's see, let's hire some more handymen. Does bungee jumps, he's loyal and friendly. Arrogant and cocky, remarkably polite and genuine. Yeah, he's good. Uh, let's just put some plants in here so it looks a little bit more. Yeah, how would you describe this? You need to look after your plants, they're getting thirsty, and basically handymen do a lot of things in the hospital. They basically fix your machines, they clean up the crap, they water the plants. Yeah, that's basically what they do. They clean up, water the plants, and repair crap. So let's see if there is no straying. Nope, there's no one over there, so that's also very, very good. Well, as you can see, some some of the uh, staff are already getting pretty tired. And that little bar, do you see? Damn it! The bar you see splitting it, uh, splitting it there. It's basically the. Um, sorry, bumped the mic there. It's basically the amount of work they work before they go out and go to the break room to rest up. So yeah, don't let it. If it overflows, basically, then they get tired and then they are prone to make mistakes. Especially if they are working machinery like that or being surgeons or that sort of stuff. I don't know if they can uh, do a misdiagnosis, but I never had that, actually. And, yeah, I kind of think what's wrong... No, what's wrong with you there, buddy? There you go. Now you see, now he's already going over there instead of walking there. And now that guy can knock on there. Basically shorting the wait time as much as possible. So now he's going to knock on the door there. And that doctor is going to go over there probably. Yes. And hardly anyone has to stand in the hospital. The patients are will be pleased about that. They also love, doing, love to sit down basically. And there we go. That's his head gone. And that's how you cure bloaty head people. And the stuff are overheating. Yeah, they don't like being too hot, so... We apologize for the extreme cold. Doctor required in general diagnosis. Oh, and I think... Be as as yep, Doctor they're all going to the staff room right now. And that's a 60% chance. Let's not do that. Yeah, this is now what you're going to get if you hire all the doctors at once. They all just get up and go over. Now that's what I... Now this is basically from the VIP. Now that's what I call a hospital, he says. You have been awarded a cash grant of 2000 And the reputation in the community has been boosted. So let's look at our reputation here. That's what we do over here. Now this is my share. People are very happy. They uh, aren't very thirsty, and yeah, they're 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 all right. So we we have a quite chunk of I don't know how much percentage it is the 31 population, and they are all much smaller. I I think I'm running the same with Orac here, although they aren't very happy. And we just won the game, apparently. Or won this, whatchamacallit, this level. So they said, marvelous, you have handled the running of this hospital superbly. Us bigwigs at the Ministry, Ministry of Health would like, you to, would like to know if you'd be interested in taking on a larger project. There's a job we think you'd be perfect for. The salary, uh, the salary would be nice. Give it some thought. Are you interested in a jo job at the Sleepy Hollow Hospital? <laughs> alright. <laughs> well, alright. Let's do this shit. But you're going to see that on the next episode. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And have a great day. Goodbye.